All right, folks, got a minute? Quick question. How do you make your garden not just green, but also mean? Yeah, you heard that right. In today's wild times, it's not just about growing veggies. It's about protecting them and your home. I'm here to drop a game changer on you. The top 10 defensive plants to have in your garden against looters. These aren't your grandma's petunias. These plants are natural fortresses. Think about it. Why not let Mother Nature help guard your fortress? Ready to transform your garden into a barrier as tough as you are? Let's make your green space a safe space. Time to level up your prepping game with some strategic planting. Without further ado, here are the 10 defensive plants for protecting your garden from looters. The number one plant to have in your garden, foxglove, digitalis purpurea. All right, folks, let's double down on this. When you're planting these beautiful yet fierce foxgloves, think like a strategist, like the best. You've got to place them where those sneaky, sneaky looters might think they have an easy in. We're talking around the fences, near windows, or any shadowy spots that seem inviting for a break-in. Make these spots a no-go zone with foxglove. It's like setting up your own natural security system, and these plants are the guards. Beautiful but tough. They're not just decorating your garden, they're protecting your castle. First up, folks, we've got the champion of the Garden Defense League, the incredible foxglove, Digitalis purpurea. It's not just a knockout in looks, it's your first line of defense against those sneaky intruders. Let's dive into what makes this plant a total winner in keeping your garden safe and sound. Look, growing foxglove is a piece of cake, believe me. It loves those USDA zones 4 to 9, shines in a bit of sun or shade. Very flexible. And the soil? Just keep it moist, not too wet, and a tad acidic to neutral. It's so easy, even if you're not a gardening genius, you'll feel like one. It's a two-year wonder, folks. First year, it lays low, building up strength. Second year, boom, it goes all out with those tall, stunning flowers. And talk about easy. It replants itself. More beauty, less work. Once you've got it in the ground, it's smooth sailing. Keep it moist. Throw some mulch around to keep it cool. And maybe do a bit of deadheading if you're feeling fancy. But really, it's as low maintenance as it gets. This plant, folks, it's a looker, but it packs a punch. Every part of it is poisonous loaded with stuff that messes with the heart. Imagine a looter biting into this. Not a pretty picture. Nausea, heart trouble, even a trip to the big garden in the sky if they're not careful. Place these beauties strategically, and you've got yourself a fortress. But let's be smart. It's potent. Ensure it's kept out of reach of children and pets, and consider wearing gloves when handling it. It's beautiful, but its strength demands respect. This disclaimer applies to all the plants on the list. All right, let's talk about an incredible plant, the oleander, the number two guy you want in your garden if you're looking at keeping those nosy looters at bay. Let me tell you, this plant is something else. It's not just any shrub, it's the powerhouse of the garden. Gorgeous, lush, and it throws out flowers like nobody's business all summer long. We're talking pinks, reds, whites, yellows, a real showstopper. Now, oleander is as tough as they come. It can shoot up to 20 feet high, but hey, we usually keep it a bit shorter in our gardens. Loves the sun, the kind of plant that thrives on a bit of neglect once it's settled in. Perfect for places that forget it rains, if you know what I mean. You can even start more of these bad boys from cuttings in the summer. Easy peasy. It's not fussy about where it plants its roots, but it likes a good tan in full sunlight and doesn't want to have wet feet. So well-drained soil is a must. Little ones need a bit of water to get going, but once this plant hits its stride, you barely need to water it. Pruning? Late winter or early spring? Just give it a quick haircut before it starts sprouting again. Now, to the juicy part. This plant doesn't mess around. Every inch of it is packed with something called cardiac glycosides, especially this thing called oleandrin. And it's not for the faint of heart. If some joker thinks they can snack on your oleander, they're in for a nasty surprise. We're talking serious tummy trouble, dizziness, even a heart that can't keep the beat. It's a natural no-go zone for anyone with a brain. Number three on our list of fantastic plants to keep the bad hombres out of your garden, the castor bean, Racinus communis. Folks, this plant isn't just good looking. It's like having a bodyguard in your garden. Easy to grow, tough on intruders. It's got it all. Let's break it down. Let's think strategically. We're going to place these castor bean plants where they'll do the most good. You know, around the perimeter of your property, close to fences, near those ground floor windows. Anywhere a looter might think they have an easy in. It's like putting up a no trespassing sign that looks good and packs a serious punch. 
make those key entry points impenetrable with a natural barrier that says, Not today, bad guys. The caster bean loves the spotlight. Full sun, to be exact. It's not picky, but it does love that rich, loamy soil. Think of it as the luxury resort of plants. Warm climates? It thrives. Colder spots? No problem. It'll put on a show as an annual. It's versatile, adaptable, a real winner. And throw those seeds in the ground when the frost says goodbye. These guys don't like to move once they're settled, thanks to their deep roots. Give them space, about two feet apart. They're like the real estate moguls of the plant world, needing room to expand. Wait a couple of weeks and boom, you've got germination. Once they're up and running, they don't need much. A little water here, a touch of fertilizer there, and they're happy. But don't overdo it. We don't want any of that leggy growth. Think of it as maintaining a top-notch golf course. Pruning? Barely needed. But if you want to shape them up, go for it. Just remember, gloves on. Every part of this plant means business, with toxins that tell pests and intruders to back off. These plants are like the secret service of the garden. Not much gets past them. Sure, a few pests might try their luck, but it's no match for the castor bean. The seeds pack a punch with ricin, a substance that doesn't mess around. A couple of seeds could be deadly, causing all sorts of trouble if ingested. It's a clear message. Don't trespass. Aside from being a stunner, the castor bean plant is a natural barrier against those looking to cause trouble. Positioned smartly, they're unbeatable security. Just make sure it's out of reach of kids and pets. Safety first. It adds beauty and security to your garden, making it clear you value the best. Coming in at number three on our incredible list of garden heroes designed to keep the bad hombres at bay, the castor bean plant, or Racinus communis, if we're being formal. Now this isn't just any plant. It's like having your very own garden bouncer. Easy to grow? Check. Tough on unwanted visitors? Double check. It's the whole package, folks. Let's dive into this. Strategically speaking, it's all about placement with these castor bean plants. We're talking perimeter defense, along your property lines, right up against those fences, or by the ground floor windows where intruders might think they've got an easy entry. It's essentially rolling out the keep out carpet, but make it stylish and with a punch. Set up these natural barriers at crucial points and it's like saying, not today to any would-be troublemakers. The castor bean plant is a bit of a diva, loving that full sun spotlight. It's not too fussy, but it has a preference for rich, loamy soil, the plant equivalent of a five-star hotel. Thrives in warm climates and puts on a stunning annual show in the cooler ones. It's adaptable, resilient, a true champion. When the last frost bids adieu, that's your cue to plant these seeds. They're not fans of relocating due to their deep root system. Space them out, about two feet apart. They're the real estate tycoons of the plant world, after all. Give it a few weeks and you'll see the magic happen with germination. Maintenance, minimal. A splash of water here, a dash of fertilizer there, and they're golden. But let's not get carried away. No one likes a lanky plant. It's about keeping things prime, like a top-tier golf course. Pruning is hardly necessary, but if you're inclined to tidy them up, just suit up with gloves. This plant doesn't mess around. It's armed with toxins that keep pests and intruders at a respectful distance. Think of these plants as the secret service of your garden. Very little slips by them. Sure, the odd pest might gamble. But against the castor bean, they don't stand a chance. Now about those seeds, they contain ricin, a no-joke substance. Just a couple of these seeds could cause a world of hurt if swallowed. It's nature's way of laying down the law. Keep out. But it's not just about defense. The castor bean plant is also a looker. Positioned wisely, it's an unbeatable mix of allure and security. Keep it away from the little ones and pets, though. Always play it safe. It's a testament to beauty and protection in your garden, echoing the best. Number four. It's called water hemlock, all right? This plant, I tell you, it's not just any plant. It's one of the most potent, the most poisonous natives we got here in North America. And guess what? It's got this sneaky look, almost like it's wearing a disguise, pretending to be something it's not, like parsnips or celery. But don't be fooled. We need to be smart. We need to know our stuff when it comes to dealing with it. Water hemlock loves the wet, loves the moist. It's a real water baby. You'll find it hanging out by streams, ditches, just loving life in the wet meadows. And if you're thinking of making your garden a fortress, this plant's a natural warrior. But remember, it likes its feet wet. 
So here's what you need. Soil. It's not picky, but it wants to stay hydrated. Keep it moist. Sunlight. This plant is flexible. Full sun, a bit of shade, it can handle it. Water. Like I said, it loves water. Keep it coming, especially when the weather's dry. Once you've got it settled in, it's pretty low maintenance. But hey, glove up when you're around it. Its sap is no joke. What it does to the bad guys. Now, on to the good stuff. Water hemlocks got these things called Sicutoxin and Sicutol. Really bad news for anyone who messes with it. Touch this plant and you're in for a world of hurt. We're talking feeling sick. Starts with a bit of nausea, then things get real bad. Seizures. This plant doesn't mess around. You eat it, you're shaking on the ground. Can't breathe. It's so potent it can stop your breathing. That's serious. Mind games. Confusion, dizziness, it can put you out or worse. So it's clear as day, water hemlock is a no-go zone for anyone with bad intentions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are rules, ethical stuff to think about. Plus, we don't want our pets or the local wildlife getting hurt by mistake. Make sure it's marked clear as day and kept out of reach. In all, water hemlock is a powerhouse. A natural defense like no other. But like all great power, it comes with great responsibility. Let's use it wisely, folks. The fifth plant on the list of poisonous plants to keep in your garden to deter looters. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. Deadly Nightshade, Atropa belladonna. This plant, let me tell you, it's got a history that's something out of a witch's playbook. With its sleek, dark leaves and those mysterious bell-shaped purple flowers, it's practically seducing you to come closer. And then BAM! Those shiny black berries that pop up are a sight to behold. But believe me, you don't want to mess with them. All right, let's dive right in here, folks, because I've got the ultimate guide for turning your garden into something straight out of a top-secret playbook. We're talking about the one, the only, deadly nightshade. Trust me, it's like the secret service of plants. Mysterious, deadly, but oh so appealing. Here's how you get this powerhouse growing. Planting 101. Sun or shade? Listen up. Deadly nightshade isn't throwing a fit over its spot. It loves the limelight, but can also hang tight in the shade. Just make sure it doesn't get thirsty. It's kind of pretending it's lounging in a forest, you get me? Soil. This plant is as uncomplaining as they come. Got sandy soil? Loamy? It doesn't matter. Just ensure it drains faster than a swamp being cleared. Likes to keep its feet dry, but a touch alkaline is where it's at its best. Watering. Picture this. It's like a survivor in a desert reality show. Needs its H2O to stay in the game. Keep it coming regularly, but don't overdo it. We're not trying to create a swamp here. Getting started! Throw those seeds into your garden when spring hits, or get a head start inside. Patience is key. This plant likes to emerge on its own sweet schedule. Give them some room to breathe. About a foot or two apart should do it. Maintenance. Keep it looking sharp. No sweat. Once this bad boy takes root, it's smooth sailing. A bit of water here, a snack there, and you're golden. Pruning. It's not high maintenance. If you see something that doesn't look right, snip it off. Keep it looking fit and fine. Pests? What pests? It's like it's got its own personal security team. Just watch out for the small fry pests and deal with them as needed. And for the uninvited. Just a touch. Look, touching it isn't going to send anyone to the emergency room, but let's avoid a face plant, okay? Eating it? Big mistake. Here's where things get dicey. Those leaves and berries aren't for snacking. We're talking serious trouble. Hallucinations, convulsions, the whole nine yards leading up to the big goodbye if not careful. Atropine, hyoscyamine, and scopolamine. They're the real tough guys here, messing with your nerves like nobody's business. Oops, ate it? Rush to the dock and fast. Time's ticking and activated charcoal might just be the lifesaver needed. The sixth plant on our list, Monk's Hood, also known as Aconitum napellus or Wolfsbane, is one heck of a plant. Gorgeous, but deadly. Its vivid blue or purple helmet-like flowers can turn any garden into a showstopper, yet every inch of it packs a punch with the potent neurotoxin aconitine. Here's the rundown on how to grow Monk's Hood, keep it looking its best, and what it does to folks who might not know what they're dealing with. Growing it. Sun and shade. Monk's Hood's not too picky. It likes a bit of shade, but will do just fine under the full sun in cooler spots, as long as it stays moist. Soil. It's all about rich, moist, and well-draining soil for this plant. 
aim for a neutral to slightly acidic pH, and mixing in some organic stuff will do wonders. Water. Keep it consistently wet, especially when it's dry out there. But don't overdo it, or you'll end up with root rot. Getting it in the ground. You can plant the seeds straight into the garden when fall or spring hits. They might need a cold spell to kickstart germination. Space them out about a foot apart. Keeping it happy. Care. Once Monk's Hood gets settled, it's pretty chill. You might need to prop it up with stakes in windy spots, or if it gets too tall to stand on its own. Trimming. Snipping off dead flowers will get it to bloom again and keep it from spreading too much. Cut back the leaves in the fall when they start to look sad. Bugs and illnesses. It's tough against pests and diseases, but watch out for slugs and snails in wet conditions. What it does to unwelcome guests. Touch. Even just touching monkshood without gloves can let aconitine seep through your skin, leading to tingling, numbness, and if it's bad, heart issues and muscle weakness. Eating it. Absolutely do not eat any part of this plant. Poisoning signs include vomiting, diarrhea, weird tingling or burning sensations, heart problems, and can escalate to extreme stomach pain, breathing trouble, heart failure, and even death. If things go south, treat any contact with monkshood as a dire emergency. There's no cure for aconitine poisoning, so care is all about keeping the person stable and dealing with symptoms. Check out number seven on our top picks for defensive plants to have in your garden to keep those looters at bay. Angel's Trumpet, Brugmansia spp. This plant isn't just a pretty face in your garden with its eye-catching, huge, hanging flowers that give off a sweet, heady scent come evening. But don't let its looks fool you. Angel's Trumpet packs a punch with its toxic alkaloids like scopolamine and atropine, which have some serious effects on folks, including making them see things that aren't there. Let's dive into how you can grow Angel's Trumpet. Keep it looking its best. Understand how it keeps troublemakers away. And the best spots to plant it for defense. How to grow Angel's Trumpet. Sunlight. This beauty loves the sun but appreciates a little shade in the afternoon to avoid getting burnt, especially in hotter areas. More sun means more blooms. Soil. It's all about rich, moist, and well-draining soil for this plant. It's not too picky about soil pH. Anywhere from slightly acidic to neutral works fine. Water. Angel's Trumpet needs its water, especially in dry spells. Keep the soil moist to keep it happy. Getting started. You can start with seeds, cuttings, or young plants. It grows quick, so make sure it has room to spread out, keeping it healthy. Care. It needs a bit of TLC to thrive, with plenty of water and nutrients. Trimming. Regular trims keep it looking good and healthy. You can even shape it into a tree if you like. Feeding. A high potassium fertilizer will do wonders during its growing season to boost those blooms. Pests and problems. Keep an eye out for bugs like spider mites and white flies. Fungal issues can happen but are rare with the right care. Dealing with unwanted guests. Risks. The plant's beauty might lure in intruders, but eating any part of it can cause hallucinations, confusion, a racing heart, dry mouth, breathing troubles, and even deadly outcomes. Its toxins can also get into the system through skin or mucous membranes, so it's best to handle it with care. Urgent care. Poisoning symptoms kick in fast and need quick medical attention. There's no specific cure, so it's all about managing the symptoms. Strategic garden placement. Guarding entry points. Planting Angel's Trumpet near entryways can keep intruders at bay with its toxic nature. Just make sure it's still a safe distance from where its beauty can be safely appreciated. Safe zones. Due to its toxicity, place it in garden spots away from pets and kids, like fenced-off areas or raised beds with clear warnings. Windows and hidden spots. Positioning it under windows or secluded spots can prevent intruders from using these areas to sneak around, thanks to its imposing presence and toxic reputation. Angel's Trumpet isn't just another pretty plant. It's a garden guardian that keeps your home safe while adding beauty and fragrance. Sliding into our number eight spot is none other than the Dumb Cane or Diefenbachia, a plant that's not just a feast for the eyes with its stunning foliage, but also a formidable ally in home defense. Now, let's break down what makes the dumb cane such a critical addition to your green arsenal. First up, Diefenbachia loves the limelight but prefers to avoid the harsh midday sun. It thrives under bright, indirect light, though it's forgiving if you can't always provide the perfect rays. Just remember to shield it from direct sunlight to prevent any leaf burn. 
When it comes to soil, think of a well-draining mix that's like a comfy bed for your plant. Peat, sand, and loam make for a dreamy, aerated, and moist environment without waterlogging the roots. And speaking of water, keep the soil consistently moist, but don't overdo it. In the winter, dial back on watering to align with the plant's more relaxed vibe. The ideal climate for our dumb cane buddy is warm and cozy, somewhere between 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and it loves a bit of humidity. So don't hesitate to mist it or set up a pebble tray to keep it happy. Taking care of a Diefenbachia is a breeze, making it perfect for gardeners at any level. Just stick to the essentials, indirect light, regular watering, and the occasional fertilizer treat. If you notice any yellow leaves, give them a quick snip to keep the plant looking fresh and encourage new growth. And when it's bursting at the seams, that's your cue for a repotting session, which is also a great time to propagate and share the love. But here's where the dumb cane truly shines in home defense. Its sap, packed with calcium oxalate crystals, is a no-go zone for any potential intruders, causing immediate discomfort and swelling upon contact. Remember, always wear gloves when handling this plant to avoid any irritation from the sap. When it comes to positioning, Diefenbachia can be both a beautiful indoor ornament and an outdoor guard in the right climates, especially in shady spots. Its placement is key, not just for aesthetics, but for maximizing its defensive capabilities. Consider pairing it with other security-minded plants like thorny bushes or those with strong scents to create a comprehensive barrier against unwanted guests. Number 9. The Lily of the Valley, or Convalaria majalis. This plant is a true embodiment of the saying, looks can be deceiving. With its delicate bell-shaped flowers and a sweet aroma, it's a picturesque sight. But don't let its charm fool you. Hidden beneath its beauty is a potent defense mechanism against unwanted guests, thanks to the toxic cardiac glycosides it harbors. If you're considering adding this formidable ally to your garden, here's everything you need to know to cultivate, maintain, and strategically place Lily of the Valley for optimum defense. Let's start with cultivation. The ideal times to plant this guardian are in the autumn or the early spring. It seeks the solace of shade, thriving best under tree canopies or similar spots in your garden that don't see much direct sunlight. The soil should be rich and well-drained, with a generous mix of compost to create the perfect growing conditions. Although it needs regular watering to keep the soil moist, especially during dry periods, Lily of the Valley is not too demanding. It spreads its rain through underground rhizomes, so you might want to set some boundaries with barriers to keep it in check. Moving on to maintenance, once Lily of the Valley has settled in, it won't ask for much. Its spreading nature provides an effective ground cover in shaded areas, minimizing your upkeep efforts. A dose of balanced fertilizer in early spring will kick off its growing season, while keeping an eye on its expansion will ensure it doesn't claim more territory than you'd like. Now, let's talk defense. The entire plant is a trove of cardiac glycosides, posing a grave risk to any intruder who dares to ingest it. The symptoms can range from nausea and headaches to serious heart complications, or worse. Its innocent look serves as a perfect camouflage, making it an unsuspected protector. However, when you're dealing with such a powerful ally, caution is paramount. Always wear gloves when handling the plant and wash your hands thoroughly afterward. For strategic placement, think of Lily of the Valley as your garden's secret sentinel. Positioning it along the borders or near potential entry points can leverage its attractive yet deceptive nature. Although its presence is a stark warning to would-be intruders, consider adding discreet signage to alert unsuspecting visitors of its toxic potential especially in areas frequented by children or pets. And when it comes to companion planting, choose other shade lovers that won't encroach on each other's space, forming a layered defense that's as beautiful as it is formidable. All right, folks, rounding off our list of the top 10 defensive plants to keep your garden safe from looters, we've got a classic but a powerhouse, the yew tree, known scientifically as Taxus SPP. This tree isn't just a pretty face in your garden. It's packed with features that make it a formidable barrier against any unwanted guests, thanks to its evergreen foliage, attractive shape, and more importantly, its highly toxic needles and seeds. The secret weapon here is taxine, a compound in the plant that's downright deadly if ingested, capable of shutting down the heart. Despite its dangerous side, the yew tree is beloved in landscaping for its undeniable beauty and adaptability. 
Let's dive into what makes the yew tree a top contender in garden defense, covering everything from planting this tough guy, keeping it in top shape, to where to place it for maximum security impact. First up, cultivation. If you're looking to add a yew tree to your garden arsenal, here's the game plan. Location, location, location. Yews aren't too picky. Thriving in well-drained soil and doing well under the full sun or tucked away in partial shade. They're champs in various soil types, though they show off their best in slightly acidic to neutral ground. Timing is everything. The best times to get these soldiers in the ground are early spring or fall. This gives them a sweet spot of moderate weather to root down and stand strong. Watering. In their early years, ewes need a steady drink to set their roots. Once they're established, they can handle the dry spells like a champ, though they won't say no to a refreshing drink during a drought. Room to grow. Planning a yew hedge or screen. Space them out based on how big they'll get. For the petite varieties, a two, three feet gap does the trick, but give the bigger ones a bit more room to spread their branches. Moving on to maintenance, because even the toughest need a little TLC. Pruning. These trees can take a hit and keep on growing perfect for shaping and hedging. Late winter to early spring, before they start sprouting new growth, is your window for giving them a trim. Feed them right. An early spring treat of balanced, slow-release fertilizer keeps them happy and healthy. Keeping the bugs at bay. Ewes are pretty solid against pests and diseases, but a little vigilance goes a long way in keeping them in fighting shape. Now what about when the intruders come knocking? Toxic defense. The U doesn't mess around with its needles and seeds packed with taxine, ready to take out anyone foolish enough to take a bite. It's an effective way to keep both two-legged and four-legged trespassers at bay. Heads up! With great power comes great responsibility. Make sure friends, family, and especially the little ones and pets know to admire the U from a distance. And where to plant these guardians? Guarding the gates. Lining your property with yews creates a natural fortress. They're like the silent sentinels, offering privacy and protection with their dense, toxic foliage. Tactical placement. Place them near entry points or the hidden corners of your garden. They're not just a deterrent, but a beautiful one at that. Mix and match. Yews play well with others, allowing you to create a garden that's both welcoming to guests and a fortress against intruders. Thank you for watching.